Rob Gant with the Goose Creek Gazette and the Berkeley Independent Newspaper. I'm here today at Goose Creek High School, John Fulmer Field, with Somerville Journal Scene sports writer Roger Lee. We're talking a little uh, Week Eight football. You know, to use a boxing terminology, you know, to use some boxing terminology, we've reached the championship rounds, kind of getting to the end of the regular season. We got a good slate of games coming up if they are played on time. Uh, so, uh, I guess Roger, tell us what's going on on your in, in, in your neck of the woods. Right, right, right now um, uh, we've got three games going on in the Somerville area. Uh, the high school league is meeting this morning, uh, so you know they might give them some more options. Uh, you know, some people at Somerville High had indicated that they might reconsider playing the James Island game uh, if they need to. But I think for now we're going to have some football for Friday night, which is you know something we didn't have last week. Yeah, Hurricane Matthew wiped it, well, wiped out the whole Week Seven slate, and. Um... You know, it still continues to impact us on week eight. Well, tell us a little bit more about your games. Uh, we've got a big rivalry game between um, Ashley Ridge is hosting Fort Dorchester. Um, you know, that's always an exciting time. Uh, that, those teams have met six times. Uh, Fort's won it three times. Uh, Ashley Ridge has won it three times. So you never know what to expect. Now, last year, Fort kind of ran away with it, uh, and they certainly have the team to do that this year. Uh, but, you know, uh, Kenny Walker and his staff over there at Ashley Ridge you know they they get excited about this game and i'm sure those kids do too yeah. and so it's you know we'll see we'll see what happens um i think probably something that uh that ashley ridge needs to focus on one which obviously you know they need to focus on yeah. uh, but the key, one of the big keys for them is, is stopping the carry on joiner uh carry on has you know almost 15 i think over 1500 uh passing yards uh talented group of receivers to throw to uh so you know that's priority one for ashley ridge. they have to stop that guy um, and then, you know, uh, make the other guys hurt you if, if, if you can do that. For, uh, for Fort Dorchester, uh, I think the key for them is, you know, stopping Cyrus Clark, Ashley Ridge running back. He's having a good year. Um, uh, he's, uh, in addition to being the team's leading rusher, he's also the number two receiver. So they like to get the ball in Cyrus' hands, and, uh, and he can do a lot with it when they do that. Uh, certainly lots of weapons on each team that the other teams have to worry about. But I think those are two keys, uh, kind of maybe two uh, X factors for, for Ashley Ridge. I think if uh, their uh, defensive ends, Alex DeLoach and um, Owen Treppen, if they can have uh, a particularly well, you know, particularly good game, I think that can make a difference. You know, they're going to be key in keeping to carry on from using his legs and just you know running up and down the field every, every series. Uh, for Fort Dorchester, uh, you haven't really heard a whole lot about Fort Dorchester's secondary. They're a young group, but they're getting better. I think uh, that could be the X factor for them. If they're, uh, they've, I think they've made some changes. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen them in a couple of weeks, but I think they've made some changes back there, put some new guys, at least one new guy in. And if one of their defensive backs could come up with a big game, then that could uh, kind of clinch it for Fort Dorchester. Another game on, uh, on our, my side of the, the fence is uh, Somerville is hosting James Island for their homecoming game. Now, uh, one thing that definitely has been canceled is the uh, homecoming parade that was going to be later today. They're moving the homecoming parade to before the Fort game, that Wednesday before the Fort Dorchester game. Now, they are still having homecoming activity. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we got a little, got a gym hey, all right, man, a little extra excitement here. Anyway, they are they are having the um, homecoming at halftime. So if if you know anybody on the homecoming court, you know uh, it, the weather is supposed to be nice this Friday. You might want to get out there and, and show your support for those people. Um, see, Somerville is three and three. Uh, James Island is two and four. Um, you know, I think uh, Somerville stands a really good chance in this game. Uh, uh, James Island has a good passing attack. They're going to have to, uh, Somerville's secondary is going to have to really do a good job. But they've got the personnel there. I think Somerville's defense is, is a little too tough for James Island. But, you know, you can't count James Island out. They've uh, they got a good program over there. Uh, uh, two guys having an exceptional year for Somerville are quarterback Jonathan Bennett, uh, dual threat. Uh, but he's uh, really improved his passing game since last season, uh, uh, moving the ball around. Uh, Shaq Davis is a tall receiver uh, who has just given Somerville an extra option this year. A 6'4 guy, him and Jonathan are both basketball players, so uh, you know Jonathan's got plenty of experience giving that alley-oop to him, and it's kind of transferred over onto the football field. You know, just That's his favorite target this year. 
Obviously, Somerville has other weapons. They've got some good running backs, some good receivers, but Shaq has really stepped his game up this year. Uh, well, I, it's his first year with a, you know, playing varsity football, but uh, he's really stepped up in his first year rather than you know, not doing better than he did last year. Uh, another game we have, uh, uh, both those games at 7.30 p.m. Friday for now, if nothing changes. Uh, also, Pinewood will be hosting Lawrence Manning. Pinewood is on a bit of a roll. Um, you know, their uh, their quarterback, backup quarterback at the beginning of the year is now their starting quarterback due to injury. Filled that slot, Bobby Casey, you know, like, like it was natural for him. Uh, him and Matthew Latham are having exceptional years. Uh, Latham at running back is one of the um, leading rushers in the low country. And, uh, you know, I expect him to have a big game uh, this Friday night as well. Uh, Rob, what's going on on your side? Well, I've got quite a few got got quite a few games going on. Starting with the group that plays right here at John Fulmer Field, the Goose Creek Gators. Uh, they're hosting the Wando Warriors. Goose Creek has uh, kind of got a shot in the arm on September 30th. They were able to pull out their first win of the season on the last play of the game against Ashley Ridge. That's kind of renewed their enthusiasm for the the process of trying to be good at football. Um, that should be a, a pretty good game. I expect Goose Creek to begin to start to put it all together here as we reach the home stretch. I think you'll see a different team the second half of the season than you saw the first half of the season. Um, Stratford is going to travel over to West Ashley. That's Marion Bowl three. Uh, two brothers coaching against one another, Joe Marion for Stratford, Bobby Marion for West Ashley. Uh, from the Stratford perspective, I mean, their season has reached DEFCON one. Uh, they need to start winning if they want to get to the playoffs. Right now, the Knights still looking for their first win of the season. Um, they got a lot of work to do. I mean, the kids are over there working hard. I know the coaches are coaching hard. And if they're going to make a move to try to get into the playoffs, they need to begin doing something right now. A couple – guy I really want to recognize there for Stratford is a, is, is a kid that's playing tremendously hard on defense. He's a defensive back. Um, his name is Omari Johnson. Uh, he is committed to Walford College. He leads the team in tackles with 57. So even though they're not having the great success – on the field, he is playing hard. Like you know, the game really matters to him, and uh, he's really standing out to me. On the offensive side of the ball, uh, the quarterback Hunter Taylor, um, the Somerville transfer, he is nine yards short of a thousand passing yards on the season, so he should eclipse that mark. Um, speaking of a rivalry game, uh, Hanahan travels over to Bishop England. Bishop England, that's a matchup of you know two pretty good quarterbacks. Uh, uh, for Bishop England, it's, I'm going to call him the captain, Leo Albano. Al Albano. Um, he is a dual-threat quarterback for the Bishops. He's got them off to a 6-0 and start. Uh, Hanahan, uh, you know, as you know, has Victor Colbert. He is also a dual threat. He's thrown for over 1,000 yards, also a, a threat to run the ball. He's got some weapons to work with. Uh, Hanahan has won 17 in the last 18 between the two, but I, mean, I think on paper people would consider Bishop England the better team this year. Um, but we'll see how it plays out. It should, I mean, it should be a fun game. Um, another game, let's see, Stahl is going to host Kane Bay. The Cobras are off to a 6-0 and start. I mean, just totally a, a productive uh, offensive group for Kane Bay. Um, they are on a roll. You know, it seems like they're topping 500 yards rushing every week. Um, they are 6-0. and Stahl is actually having a better season than it's had in the past. Uh, they've got their 3-3. Three and three, and after having only won something like four games in three years. So they're making progress as a program. The Cane Bay is going to be way, 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 way too much. I would expect R.J. Roderick to have a field day. Chris Copeland as well. Um, let's see. Uh, another game of Berkeley County, Bethune Bowman, is scheduled to play at Cross Friday. That could be a game that was impacted by Hurricane Matthew. Maybe it's played Saturday, maybe it's played Monday. I'm not sure the status of that game. For Cross, those guys are trying to get back on track after losing at C.E. Murray two weeks ago. Um, so they want to go out and prove that they are a region contender, a Class A contender. Uh, a couple more. Manning is at Timberland. The Wolves, uh, they're sharpening their teeth for a region uh, title uh, run if they can get, get through Manning. Manning gave Hanahan fits last week. Uh, ended up beating the Hawks 28-23. Hawks coughed it up in the final minute inside the red zone. So Manning has a good football team. Timberland, I uh, believe in their last game, they played Lake Marion and they put it all together. Jermaine Gaston had a huge day rushing. Um, and, and pretty much everybody had five or six tackles. Great group. Uh, defensive effort there 
for Timberland. Uh, two more. St. John's Christian is at Wardlaw. Uh, that's a long haul to North Augusta or Edgeville County for the Cavaliers. Um, but they've had a pretty successful season this, this year after not winning a game last year. They're four and three. Uh, I would look for a very fun game there. Um, it's it's eight-man football. It'll, it'll, it'll be in the 60s to the 50s, I'm sure. Uh, one last game, Orangeburg Prep. We'll travel right over here to Northwood Academy to take on the Chargers. Uh, Chargers kind of looking to put it together here the second half of the season. They got it kicked off September 30th. Uh, with a 38-19 win over May River. Uh, big game for Nolan Litchfield. He had five touchdown passes. Um, he threw two to, I think he threw two each to two of his favorite targets. It was a very efficient effort. Um, well, that will do it for the this, this slate of games this week for week eight. Um, as we mentioned earlier in the video, there's a chance that some of the, the schedule times could be impacted by what the high school league determines today. Some teams may play their games later. They may move them further back. We don't really know, but uh, definitely stay tuned to uh, thejournalscene.com or www.journalscene.com, berkeleyind.com, and ourgazette.com. We'll have the information on all the games and when they're rescheduled for. But I know I speak for a lot of people when I say that we're ready to get the show on the road and let's get these guys out here playing some football, kind of return to normalcy for everybody. Absolutely.